This game between Efim Geller and Mikhail Tal was played in the USSR Championship of 1983. In this game, um, as he often does, Mikhail Tal uh, sacrificed um, an exchange. He offered the sacrifice of an exchange, hoping in return to get uh, good play on the dark squares. Uh, but Geller found a very convincing way to decline the sacrifice and um, to find a better way to win that endgame. As usual, Mikhail Tal plays the Sicilian defense. This move order, where black doesn't waste time yet on pawn moves like uh, a6, um, actually allows white a very dangerous option, which is g4, the so the so-called Karis attack. But in this game, Galler just chooses a more calm continuation. Uh, black has mobilized his pieces uh, very fast and. Uh, begins to initiate some exchanges in the center. So the rook is attacked and it has to retreat uh, either to f1 or to f2. Uh, rook to f2 has become the main line in this position now. Um, on f1 the rook would be well connected with the rook on d1 on f2, on the other hand, um, if the rook is placed on f2, then white has a chance to to possibly double up on the f file and put the pressure on f7 or or on f6, and and this turned out to be the key idea in this game. The knight occupies a good outpost, and black's using the fact that um, it's really bad for white to take on d4 twice, say bishop d4, e takes d4, and then rook takes d4 because of bishop to c5 winning the exchange. So the rook is attacked uh, on f8 and it could just uh, simply retreat to d8 um, or or black could first take on e2 with check. Those are both good options. Um, instead Tal was tempted by uh, fighting for initiative in a way and, and fighting for the dark squares and uh, he decided to uh, just uh, leave the rook on f8, um, open up the a7 g1 diagonal, uh, and win the pawn in the meantime. So he simply took on c2. So here, of course, Geller could have simply taken on f8, and his position would be quite decent after that. Um, the main problem with that probably was that this was something that Tal had prepared at home and Tal probably had some ways of developing the initiative in the case of bishop takes f8. So so Geller kind of looked into the heart of the position, realized that the most important thing is uh, for him to develop pressure on the f-file and, um, and made a very unexpected move. This kind of move of course is very easy to miss in analysis or in the preparation, um, in particular if, like at the time, you can't use a computer to double check all your lines, and it's, it's really easy to miss that kind of move. The idea is that um, white wants to, to remove the knight on f6. Um, by doing so, he would also uh, gain control over the d7 square. Um, he would allow his knight to come to d5 without being exchanged. Um, so he would get a lot of really important advantages if he could exchange or win that, that knight uh, on f6. Um, and this turns out to be um, a, a very important decision and um, it's probably something that Tal completely had not expected. This was forced otherwise um, black would be losing a piece. So white temporarily sacrificed the pawn, but he got his rooks into very active squares, and the bishop is also planning to come out to c4, uh, and in the meantime also black uh, has to deal with his knight being attacked. So Geller doesn't even waste time on taking the pawn on b7, instead he makes a move with um, two threats. One is to capture on c2, the other one is to of course capture on f7. 
and uh, when you have initiative it's it's better to keep activating your pieces and not uh, just grabbing pawns this is a pretty simple trick of course uh, black cannot take on c4 because then he'd be checkmated after rook g7 king h8 rook h7 rook d to g7 again white can take a pawn on um, b7 um, but then black may be able, be able to trade off the, the important bishop with knight d8 and uh, instead Geller kind of looked at the position again and said to himself probably how can I activate uh, my remaining pieces and realize that the knight on c3 isn't being very active and, and just um, tried to bring that piece into the game And now the material is even, but the white pieces are completely dominating with the rook on the seventh rank, the black king cut off, and um, the, the black pawns are being really vulnerable. So white has uh, an extra pawn. Uh, his bishop is, is really well placed on d5 and uh, in the positions with the rooks and when, when there are pawns on both sides of the board the bishop is stronger than a knight so in general white has a technically winning position here so of course Tal just not want to simply go down uh, without a fight so he activated the knight and the knight has managed to to get a pawn back to, to come to an active square now it's hitting the pawn on b3 but still um, the position remains lost for black so now uh, black is trying to create counterplay on the king side exchange as many pawns as possible and uh, still hoping to save the game but Geller noticed that just for this one moment uh, all of the black pawns are on the fifth rank and he decided to sacrifice the pawn on b3 so that in return he can get the advantage on the other flank so finally white managed to kind of strangle that knight and now it's completely restricted by the uh, the white bishop and uh, of course that means that white's position is winning here uh, here white has uh, probably a pretty simple plan of just activating the the king uh, maybe bringing it to the king side and then uh, at one point or another advance the pawns um, and uh, r right now white's threatening rook of eight so and if, if black ever moves the knight then white's going to exchange it and the rook end game is probably a draw so the position is completely winning for white so Tal resigned um, quite an interesting game showing how um, uh, your preparation can sometimes backfire against you and how um, some moves uh, that don't accept the, the sacrifice are very easy to miss um, and that's what caused Tal's downfall in this game and on the other hand it's also instructive how Geller was always trying to activate his pieces in this endgame always keep his rooks, bishop um, and knights active and that's what eventually won the game for him